I'm your host, Booker. All day long, I said I wasn't going to do it. Ho, ho, feel ya. I wasn't going to do <laughs> ho, hey, ho, ho, hey, but I did it anyhow. It's been Couldn't subliminal. help myself. Subliminal, yeah. It's all there. Yeah. It's just all there for you. Uh, let's talk about this new album some more. Um, when, you, when you put out a record, and I've heard it, and it's, it's really hard to tell the audience and everyone listening, it is very Lumineers, but everything is completely different from everything that you've done, and yet you could still say it's the Lumineers. When you're recording music, do you sometimes look at one another and say, we've done this before, scrap it? Yeah, sometimes. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, I just read this Rick Rubin quote, you know, the producer Rick Rubin. He said the best way to serve the audience is to ignore them. And I feel like after the first album... Sorry, guys. <laughs> I tell my boss that every day. Yeah. No, but after the, after the first album and the success of Ho Hey, I think... Me personally, I was like, I felt uh, very in my head about working on the second album. Now working on album four with Wes, I just feel like whether we decide it consciously or subconsciously, there is this moment where we want to evolve here and there, maybe use an electric instead of an acoustic. Uh, this album, we actually started using drum beats for basically the first time. The first three albums are sort of foot stomps and amalgamations of drum sets, but this was fun to sort of let loose and you know have this sort of drum set type feel, more electric guitars. Um, even the way you were writing lyrics I've heard you talk about was more kind of off the cuff and less yeah. point A to point B storytelling. It was really Yeah, like a feeling, yeah. 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 Do things ever go horribly wrong in that screwing around with it? You say, mm, we're on the yeah, wrong mo track mostly. Here. Mostly it does, and then you hear the good stuff, I would yeah. say. But it's kind of like, um, I, lo I, love, I love comedy, and I love how uh, comedians can go on a stage and work something out in real time with an audience, and then you eventually see a special... And that's sort of like, that's their album, quite literally. And for us, we started out doing open mics and we could, we could throw a song in the deep end and say, I feel nothing back. You know, like it, it falls flat or you feel like somebody emotes something. You feel this connection right away of, oh, I'm, I'm onto something here. And you lose that once you are known, you know, in any way. Mm -hmm. So um, I think part of it is trying to have like a sharp edge with, does this actually work? You know, is this actually a good song or are they just being nice or, you know, they'll hate it by tomorrow. You know what I mean? You want to you wanna feel like something is transcending that and it's a hard place to get. I remember we were lucky enough to open for you too and he said, I listen through other people's ears. You know, so he'd, he'd play them their, his music and he would actually sometimes like sing over his own album. He'd be like, oh, oh, feel it. if it was me. You know, just like yelling at you my own lyrics. But... He wanted to know if he was committed, I think, and he wanted to know if the listener yeah. was impacted by that. And I, as I get older, I'm like, yeah, that. It's, I'm, I'm so much more interested in like how he, how they manage to stay, stay sharp and stay fresh with that stuff. Because if we went to an open mic, you might have people go, oh, I, I think I know who that is, as opposed to really anonymously playing a song and seeing if someone reacts to it. So much like a stand-up comedian, you you probably take some sort of joy in bombing because you know you're getting something out of it, weirdly enough. Yeah, it's, it's better to have a, a, okay, a bad idea than an okay idea, you know? It's like good gets in the way of great, so you could be like, yeah, this has always been pretty good. Yeah. I guess we'll just keep it. Or, wow, that's the moment, you know? And I think a lot of... Um, we, ju we just feel lucky that a lot of these songs, like, we still enjoy playing and, and like because sometimes, you know, you... You end up writing a song that doesn't turn out the way it felt on a Monday. By Wednesday, you're like, oh, shit, that's not very good. Yeah, Didn't quite work yeah. out. What was the writing process like during this odd time? I mean, so Jared moved to Italy with his wife, who's Italian. And um, so we were exchanging voice memos back and forth from our phones and then met up and workshopped the ideas in Denver for just a few weeks and then went to the studio. And at that point... Normally we show up to the studio and I don't know if there's any musicians out here, but you, you record it and you can put it in Pro Tools and you can build it up. You can put like drums and you know violin. And all these things are simulated. Uh, and instead we just kept it like an open mic. It was just bare bones. It was either piano and vocals or guitar and vocals. And I remember this, I remember the, our producer Simon was like, okay, I guess, I guess this is how they're doing it this time. They're not gonna give me that much. We're gonna have to figure it out on the spot. So even with something like we played Brightside, there was a guitar going, and then Jer went, doo, 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 da, 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 like kind of imitated the, the guitar, and then I had I had to do something else because I can't do the same thing as him, and so it, it, that spontaneity brought about a very different sounding record. So on our 
on our second album, there's a song called Angela that I, I love that song. And I think the reason I loved it so much is because it was done truly last minute. You know, it was like, all right, we need another song. We don't have enough. Uh, let's do this one. Oh, we don't have lyrics. Let's write lyrics. Okay. And everything, ha and then uh, you'd be performing and go, what's the next chord? What's the next line? And you can hear that in the recording. There's an uncertainty yeah. that is really exciting. It's like when you go see your favorite band or something and they're sweating a little bit and you're like, oh, they don't know quite what they're doing. It's not like the Vegas routine where like, and then I do this. It's like, you have no idea. Yeah. I think there's something about that. This whole album is like a bunch of Angela's on it. Just like last minute editions. Doesn't sound that way. Yeah. I mean... It really does it. I, I'm, I'm so happy coming up on the live feed. You're going to hear where we are. It's my favorite track. And I don't know what your favorite. Do you have favorite tracks? Is that even a, a va I'm sure they're Seems all yours. change a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now it might be AM radio. It's a song that yeah. just came out a couple weeks ago. And I just really love that song. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.